Hey everybody, what's going on? Klaus here, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today, I've decided it's time to start our strategy series, and I, this is a part of me that I am, I've been exercising for my entire life. I absolutely love strategy games, I love war games, and I love historical games, and Rome Total War really encompasses all of that. Rome Total War has been around forever. I used to play for hours on end. I've played it overnight many, many times as a kid. And so I thought, you know what? A game that I love so much deserves to have a slot on the channel. So I, I plan on uploading this once a week, a basically a campaign of us taking over the world. And um, well, the known world. So this is Rome Total War. It's based on the Roman times. And um, basically what we'll be doing is we'll be taking over the map of Europe. Now, whenever you first download this game, only three of these factions are available. The Romans Julii, the Romans Brutii, and the Roman Scipii. Basically, those are three big major family names, and you get to choose one of each of those, the Romans Julii being the people that are kind of in charge of taking over the north. They're in charge of taking over the barbarians, and um, they've got a, a fairly difficult job just because there's like the mountains right there and stuff. It's a difficult uh, job to have, but I think the hardest job is uh, given to the house Brutii, and they're the ones to kind of like the southeast and their job is to kind of take on the Greeks who are very very advanced in technology they're very difficult and also you have to cross the ocean over and over again to beat them so uh, the broody I have a very difficult job ahead of them and then the skippy I which are the blue they're, they're kind of more of the southern group their job is to take on the Carthaginians and head south and conquer northern Asia and of course you know the broody I they don't just take on the Greeks they go east and they take on you know like the uh, the just just everybody out to the east so that is the original three groups that we could choose from now i have played this game in the past and the way the game works is as you destroy different groups then you can play a campaign as them so you know the egyptians are an option the seleucid empire is an option the carthaginians are an option the parthians the gauls which are the northern uh and the germanians are the northern barbarians also you have the britannians modern day brits and then the greeks which uh, are kind of like like, they're not in a very good position. But yeah, so we're going to be playing Rome Toe to War. I cannot wait, guys. I love this game so much. It's definitely, and I've said this about all the games that we've started on the channel lately, it's definitely one of my favorite games of all time. So we are going to play as the House of the Broody Eye. All right, so the House of the Broody Eye, the green team. Okay, my dad says that geniuses pick green. Green's the favorite cover color of a lot of the geniuses in the world. Well, we're just going to pick green because they have the hardest job I think of all and that's to take on the Greeks so what we're going to do we're gonna play without advice because I've played the game enough we're gonna play on hard difficulty okay very hard is an option as well but I don't like it whenever I'm playing a game and it's obvious that the computer is cheating uh, they have a blatant advantage I don't want to play with that also arcade style battles we can go without that manage all settlements yeah so in in a if you uncheck that basically what happens is if you don't have like a, a general or a leader in a specific city then you don't get to manage what happens and I don't like that I like to have control um, follow AI characters so basically what that means is if they're within our range of sight then we can see them moving around on the battle map which I find to be very useful no battle time limit I've never understood that I think that's just a game mechanic that allows people to take advantage of but basically what that means is um, you know you'll play a game and a battle and it gives you 30 minutes and if you don't take that city or if you don't destroy the other opponent in 30 minutes you lose and I don't think that's fair so we're gonna remove that and that, that's pretty much it so without any more delay guys we're going to start this epic epic journey and that reminds me actually that there is a cutscene in here we're gonna actually sit and enjoy that so let me uh, let me actually turn off my my face and the little frame there now let's watch this enjoyable little cutscene from the house of the broody eye We Brutii are the only true Romans. We saved Rome. We drove out the kings. We made the Republic. The family deserve respect for that. Respect and obedience. We know what is best for Rome. New lands, living space, territory, slaves. I know what must be done. The Greeks. They look down their perfumed noses at all Romans, and they hate us. I'm going to give them a real 
reason for hate when I have crushed them. Roman steel, that's the answer. Roman steel in a booty eye fist. And the other great Roman families. The Scipii, trash. They have no respect for proper Roman ways. For us, the Julii prostitute themselves as if the people mattered. Bah. We, Brutii, must lead Rome. All right, guys, so uh, first of all, I need to lower the volume down on the game. So, okay, so this, this is Rome Total War. And look at this, we're already put, getting put to work. We haven't even introduced the game yet. But the Senate, all right, so the Senate are these guys here, the Romans, like the center of the civilization that we know today. The Senate will give us jobs. And right now, they're saying your job is to take... Apollonia. You have 10 turns to do that, by the way, and if you do it, then you'll be greatly rewarded. Doesn't give any specifics. So uh, I'll go ahead and accept that. Not that I have a chance to say no, but you know, I could just not do it. But yes, this is Rome Total War. It is a map of the world. You notice that we can see some things, but we can't see others. This is known as the fog of war. We're not going to be able to see what's going on in the world. We can only see what we can see based on our, our reach of influence here. We're the green. We're the house of the broody eye. Here in the blue house of the Scipii, or otherwise known as the Scipio family. And then we have the Julii up top. Now, I just want to be very clear in this, and I'm not a historian, but what I do know about it is that this is not at all how Rome was operated. Um, I think this is definitely a, a, a mechanic that was put into the game just to make the game a bit more interesting. But the there, there were no families of the Roman house that were vying for power. There was no possibility of, I mean, the, uh, probably there were civil wars, I don't even know that, but what I do know is that the, the, the Brutii, the Scipii, the Julii, this was not how it was done historically. But, I am pretty sure, like certain families, like maybe the Julii family, the Julius family, maybe they were known as, you know, good at fighting the, the barbarians, so they were typically sent north. I, I don't know, but what I do know is that this is not historically accurate. Just wanted to throw that out there. So, what we need to do now is we need to start just managing our settlement. So let's just check out Croton here. Oh, and by the way, I realize that my face cam will cover up a bit of the map, but I double checked before we started recording, and there's nothing super, super important that shows up in this section of the game at any point. I'll just make sure that everything I'm talking about is in the center of the screen. That way you guys can see it. So zooming in completely, this is our capital. And the way this game works is you're actually able to move armies around the map. As you can see, this is Amulius Brutus, one of the family members. He's got a, a, a unit of Equites, which is kind of like the light cavalry. We've got two units of Hestati and one unit of Velite. Hestati is kind of like the traditional infantry, though they do have some javelins to throw or whatever they're called. Pila, Pila, I think is the name. And then Velites, which throw the the same thing, the, the long javelin throwing guys. So, um, you're able to move specific and individual pieces around this map. The, the map is invisibly divided into little tiles, and your army is taking that tile or holds that tile, and you're actually able to move it. They have a limited number of move points. You can't send an army and send it all the way across the world in one turn, which one turn is half a year, six months technically, in the game. It is currently 270 BC, and we are, um, we're the Romans, and so we're, we're kind of like the envy of the modern world. We've got all the best technology, uh, supposedly, um, even though I would argue that the Greeks and the Macedonians over here, the Egyptians down here, that, you know, all these guys are very, very difficult to deal with, and even the barbarians, I mean, the barbarians of the north, they may not have the technology, but man, do they fight hard, and then, of course, you've got the, the, the northern African areas, which they've got, the, it's just a deadly thing, so there's no, like, easy part of the world to take over. It is all going to be a struggle, especially on hard difficulty, which if uh, you're like me, you actually play the game for the first time on easy difficulty, but we're not going to do that. We need a little bit of a challenge here. So I'm going to move my boat into the dock. That That's just because it's shorter and easier for my troops to get here. This is Apollonia, actually. And Apollonia is a city, the first city that we are going to take over. Actually, it's called a village. They're, they're, they're calling it a village. It's not big enough to be a city. And that's a part of the Epiro Rebels, which we're at war at with the 
rebels. As you can see here, this is the Scipii. They, it says that we're allies with the Scipii because we're, we're allies with all the Romans. And then here in the north, you can see the Gallic large town. This is the Gauls, modern day France, which is here. Paris is somewhere around that area there. These are the Gauls, and this is probably going to be one of the most beneficial locations. Look at this. It's in a river basin. It's dark green. It's a beautiful thing. And um, Batavian will be definitely a goal for us if we can get to it before the Julia just because it's such a beneficial location and then obviously the topography and the geography takes a big part in it so for instance if you have a, a unit here and you want to go north you can't just walk over the mountains because back then that's not what they did they took passes and here is a mountain pass here so if you're able to maybe put in like a fort in between the pass between the mountain pass then it would be a protected zone and Patavium is very easily defended because there's only like three ways to get into the, the, the area. Also, there's a river here. You can't cross the river unless there's a bridge or just a crossing point, which is right there below Seneculus of Sabus, which is the Gallic diplomat. So all that being said, I say we start doing this and the, the cities are actually very... Um, complex as well and it's that if you click this little button here Tarentum is our capital and unfortunately that is something that is covered by uh by my face cam but hopefully it's not nothing too distracting here uh but Tarentum is the capital and I can choose what to build in this capital so for instance if I wanted to build a wall which we already have a wall so it's not really a high priority but if we wanted to the construction time is two turns and each turn you initiate by hitting the intern button whenever you hit the intern button all the other players in the world are gonna do their moves and then you might get attacked or whatever so I think because Tarentum's our capital it also needs to be kind of like our economic heartland unfortunately we don't have any safe places I mean I, I guess to the west we're not we're not expecting an attack from them but unfortunately since we only have two cities in our empire we could be attacked from any direction aside from probably west like I said because we got Romans to the to the west but from the south you get the the uh, the Greeks you got the I think this is owned by the Carthaginians right there both of those are enemies of Rome so we just need to have a very balanced build that's kind of the the point so with a balanced build or maybe economic heartland we might want to build the shrine to mercury because it does increase tradable goods it also adds to public order or if we don't want to do um, a shrine to, to mercury we could actually do a shrine to juno which will add five percent to happiness and health and that's something we haven't touched on yet and that's the you see this tax right here public order is 135 135 is good anything above 100 is good so adding buildings that add to health or happiness or whatever will help these people stay happy if they get unhappy and they start rebelling then you could t technically lose the city to the rebels um, another option would be mars and i think the the shrine of mars this is the god of war so eventually as you upgrade the building because you go, you build the shrine then you build the second level and the third level up to like five i think then it actually will add experience and make your soldiers better fighters and so you want to definitely put the shrine to mars in a place that's going to be kind of like the the uh, offensive heartland the offensive infrastructure of your of, of your empire so because Tarentum is our capital i think that going with shrine to mercury will make most sense because that'll be where most of our money is made in this economic heartland here now i'm going to up go up to very high taxes that's 95 and as you can see this little face turned yellow if I go to above 100 the face is green and I think actually I think you can go down to 80% before people start getting really mad and because our uh, Vibius Brutus who is a general he is a he's one of my favorites uh, just because he's one of the original sons of the original leader Vibius Brutus here age 30 and I'm, I'm unfortunately you can't see that but Vibius Brutus age 30 is um is is here go, uh, you know taking care of the place and so the city should stay fairly happy if we hop down to croton here then here's tiberius he's our leader he's 52 as covered up by my face cam here and we are going to crank up the taxes on him look at that 80 percent turns blue so anything below 80 i believe could result in potential um uh, potential of um of rebellion and we don't want rebellion but since croton is also part of our economic heartland i'm going to go ahead and build a shrine to mercury here as well now there is something that my face cam is covering up and i can't turn it off but that's the population basically as the place uh, 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 po the population increases in these places then you can level them up and there's something to be said about recruitment so now that we've talked about construction let me go back to torrentum um it, there's something called c recruitment and that's where you actually get your soldiers you do actually fight physical three-dimensional army versus army battles in this game which is fantastic and so something to consider is these cities they have a set population that grows over time 
the uh, population growth right now is covered by my face cam is two and a half percent and so over time this thing will grow two and a half percent it'll increase or decrease depending on the buildings you build or how much population there is obviously the more population the more it'll grow but there's also a thing called squalor which is how dirty a place is and that will decrease the speed of growth so um also one thing to remember and consider is that like if we were to build this uh, unit of town watch right town watch has 160 soldiers that physically removes 160 people from your city so if you are recruiting too much as far as soldiers and units in a city then you will actually deplete the population and then you won't be able to level up the city so all those things need to be considered when doing this uh, another thing to consider is the uh, the traits of the general so here's amulius brutus as you can't see unfortunately by the face cam i might have to move the face cam i don't know I don't know how we're going to handle that, but the, uh, the the command of this guy is pretty good. He's a decent guy, but um, his traits are here as well. Unfortunately, we can't see that. That's a big part of it. Basically, Amulius Brutus is a confident commander, and uh, that gives him plus one to his command ability. Natural born leader, also plus two. Political animal will um, increase his influence, and you can actually read that. That's good. And plus one to influence, and it and basically makes him a better politician. And then intelligent adds influence, command, and management. It's really good, but nothing here is negative or positive towards morale which is probably the most important thing that you have to deal with whenever you're in battle is if your troops lose their morale the game is over you're pretty much going to lose so what we'll do is we're going to send them Julius Brutus the game's kind of pre-set us up with the situation where we have to cross the river we have a boat which is lucky and we have an army sitting right here now before we do that I'm going to send my spy okay the spy is just a way of keeping track of things and we're going to send the spy onto the boat we're also going to send the army onto the boat and then we're going to cross the ocean and now Amelius Brutus with the uh, the spy is here on this continent, which um, I don't I don't know what this continent specifically is is called or is used to be called, but it's Greece in my head. So we're gonna actually check out Apollonia with the spy to see what they have in their city. So as you can see here, we have militia hoplites and two peltas. The militia hoplites are actually pretty good. They have an attack of five. They get a total defense of eight. They can form a phalanx, which is very dangerous. And they have a bonus against cavalry, so you don't want to charge cavalry into the front of a militia hoplites, especially in phalanx, because the cavalry will just, just drop. But luckily for us, the poor morale makes militia hoplites not the greatest soldiers. And then peltas, basically the same thing as the velites that we have, and that they, um, they're, they're kind of like a missile... Uh, they're a missile attacker, so they can hide in long grass. They have bonus against elephants and chariots We don't have either one of those combat bonus in woods fast moving and can sap so sapping I believe is you can dig under the walls of a city. I think that's what that means. So That doesn't look all that dangerous. We have really nothing to worry about plus also if you look inside of this army We have our own uh, velite. We have our own range uh, that we can use we've also got two units of full-fledged infantry to kind of pin the uh the, the phalanx up and then we can use our cavalry uh, behind and destroy them so let's go into apollonia and just throw down the assaults and i don't have to worry about you know putting it under siege or anything and waiting them out because they don't have walls they literally cannot stop me from attacking them so amelius brutus one of the family members of the royal family has five command points and captain oedipus has no command points and he's also just a standard captain so he doesn't have the heavy cavalry that amelius brutus actually has let me see if i can pull that up for us yes i can so if i click the unit details the roman generals here attack of 11 remember I, we've seen like a Attack of five, so this is really good. Defense is 14, and they've got great morale, good stamina, fast moving. This is a solid unit. You definitely want to have at least one general in each of your um, in each of your armies as you attack. So there's two things we could do here, we, or the three. There's actually three things. One, we could fight on the battle map, which we absolutely will. We can also automatically resolve on the computer, just do it. But because we have it set on hard, there's a good chance that Captain Oedipus would have an advantage, and we don't want that. And then lastly, withdraw from battle, basically. We're gonna look at this and we're gonna say you know what? I don't think I want to do this I'm gonna back out instead But if we hover over that little blue and red bar there It actually shows that the computer calculates that we have an army strength ratio of seven to two We have a huge advantage as just brute force let alone the strategy that we're gonna be able to pull off against a computer Which um, is just you know never gonna be as good as human intuition. So without any more delay Let's get into the battle of Apollonia and see how we do now we're going to zoom in and now notice we're attacking from the northwestern corner. All right, that northwestern corner is uh, where our army is going to come from and the topography actually makes a difference. Now, I didn't worry about it because Apollonia is on flat land. As you can see Over here, there, it's got a 
They are braver and more worthy than men of their type have any right to be. So let your battle cry put fear into the enemy's guts. Call out to them and be brave. Call to the heavens and let strength and honor be your watchwords today. Wow. So our general who is here gives... Uh, they actually give like big speeches and say, you know, we are where sometimes they're like we're Romans These guys don't deserve to live whatever. It's so charming. I love Rome total war, but here we have the mountains Okay, so that's uh, as you can see at the map down here. We're facing to the east There are mountains directly to the east of Apollonia, which is this little village Here's also the water where we came from and I believe you can see the boat. Yes, you can There's the boat way over there That is the boat that we actually came on and that's to the west and that is actually how it happened And so everything in the battle map is very true to the actual geography of the game which I find to be so cool so immersive so what we'll do is since it's difficult and more difficult for our soldiers to actually march uphill and that's slightly uphill not that big of a deal but it's still slightly uphill we are gonna come from this direction plus this is a this is the entrance so this is their city and this is the the walkway the path to get in there and um, the this is the, uh, the the plaza. This is where we need to get to win. Now, I don't normally count getting to the plaza and holding it for three minutes or however long the game wants you to hold it for as a win. I generally try to go for just utter annihilation of the other army. Um, so, like, like that's that needs to be the focus right here. So, by looking at how the city is developed here, by coming from this corner, we'll basically have to walk around anyway. So, we need to replace our troops. And you can see this green line here. It's kind of uh, makes this big... I don't know what that, that chevron-looking thing is. But we could put our troops a, a, as a starting place before we start the battle anywhere. But... You know, if we put them down here, they'll have to walk uphill to get to the battle. That'll be a little more exhausting for them since this is one of the three different approaching points to get into the battle. I mean, obviously, you can't get to the plaza from here because there's no walkway. And there's another opening over here, but we can't put our troops over here because this is not this is from directly from the south and we approach from the northeast or northwest. So we are going to put our troops way up here on the northern corner. We're going to cheat a little bit. Not that it's not part of the game. It's not like it's really cheating, but we're going to... Uh, we're going to kind of manipulate how the game starts out for us. And so that is where I want my infantry, good strong infantry line. And then I will also put my velites. And the velites are, again, our projectiles. So we're going to be able to put our projectiles down. Let me put these guys in a little bit better position. There we go. And then our cavalry will go here. Now, you can see the difference here. 49 is the heavy cavalry. That's where our, our leader is. And then this is our equites, the light cavalry. There's 108 of those. That's super cool. So. So we've moved everybody out of the way. You can see that by the map. There's no, uh, none of our arrows. So now that we've set up, um, I'm going to put this on. Yeah, we're on fire at will mode. And we're also in skirmish mode, which will, will they, they basically, they don't want people to approach them. So they kind of back out. And then we have the Hastati. And they have the um, the Pila. I think that's, again, I think that's what they're called. So uh, we're going to put those in fire at will as well. So if they decide to go on the offensive, which they very well could, then we'll be ready for them. So let's go ahead and that start battle and see where they are. Looks like we have, yes, the Militia hoplites are here, and they're kind of restructuring a little bit. They're definitely putting their best troops in the front line, but now they're falling back. They probably can see that they're vastly outnumbered. And then they have their, what are these things called again? Uh, their peltas, whatever they are, mil militia peltas, whatever. If, we, if you're too far away, by the way, it's, this is also really cool, is that you can't really see what, they're just called rebels. But you can look at their character and say, okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's not a heavy infantry. That's probably just a projectile. So... I think what we should do is we should draw up in the, the line here, maybe try to approach and get some projectiles, lure these guys away, and then we can just send our cavalry straight in and dominate. So let's uh, let's grab our Hastati and line them up, let's say right here, in a position to where they can't get through. That's where I want them to be. As soon as they get there, I will also have my Peltast approach, my Bellites approach and they'll be able to, um, you know, draw them out. And then we'll bring our cavalry to either side. So now we have the lovely job of watching our troops just march on in and look at these guys. They just look absolutely deadly. By the way, I haven't mentioned this yet, but yes, this is an older game. It's a game that I played as a kid, and there are multiple games in the series. This is Rome Total War. I never played Shogun, which I believe was the first. I did play Medieval, the original Medieval Total War. There's now a Medieval 2. 
Uh, but I thought that Rome was a good starting place for this. I do intend on moving into the next games in the series. And so we have Rome Total War. Uh, then we had Medieval 2 after that. And so on and so forth. I do intend on playing most of them. I wasn't a big fan of Empire Total War. Uh, but we might still move into that. I just love these games. I think having a strictly strategy series on the channel will be super fun. So this is it. Oh, look at this. Look, look, at, how, look at how charming this is. The Valete has actually moved over. Created columns to allow the Histadi to get through. So that they can get to their position at the front line. This is, this is so cool. So now, yep, yep, we have our cavalry moving on either side. We have our Velites in the back. Now, they don't have a very good range. Like, if I had archers, this would be much better. I could probably just shoot shoot over my guys and lure them over. Because, you know, if, if imagine it this way. If you were, you know, you knew the bad guys were near. And, ooh, looks like we've actually got their attention. Very interesting. Do I have, yes, I've got all those in fire well. So imagine you're defending. And by the way, this is an impressive amount of soldiers for a village of this size. I mean, if you look at the village itself, it really does look like there's only maybe 80 people that live here. Maybe not even that many. So the fact that they were able to muster up this many troops is very impressive. And by the way, since they're going to, well, maybe, yep, the phalanx is moving too. Awesome. All right. So then well, to take advantage of that, I think what I will do is I'm going to move my, uh, my equites onto this side. So that I could probably, you know, get behind the back of these things. And they really don't like that. And then my general, I could probably move them back here to have a double flank. I think that would, uh, that would be good. So we'll, we'll let them walk. We don't need them to make them run. So, and we need to make sure also, just by telling them where to go, we need to make sure that they don't decide to go through. You know, going th through the city. And I, I told you guys to move. What are you doing? Here, come over here. Are you going now? Yes? Excellent. Okay, so... Um, these, uh, the Peltas are actually approaching, and our Hestadi are going to respond in kind, and I like how everybody's kind of all together. So, let's see, yeah, we're, we're doing a little bit of damage, but they are as well, as you can see, we're losing a few. They're being, uh, they're being fired upon right now, but the Peltasts are, wait, the Peltasts aren't doing anything, the Velites aren't doing anything, so maybe we ought to approach and try to take these guys on, I, I don't know. I do know that this Phalanx is going to do a lot of damage if we don't take them out, um, let's see, where is their range? Yeah, the range is right up front, so maybe if we were to take our, um, or take these guys and just move up a little bit. Go ahead and run for me, okay? Just go ahead and run. I need you guys to be on guard mode. I don't want you to approach, I don't want you to fall back, I want you to just handle that. Alright, now... Because I've got my equites in behind, and I know that these guys aren't the greatest fighters, I can probably get my cavalry in behind and handle it just fine. So I'm going to get my general, bring him around the back. I'm going to send my equites in behind too. No, 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 equites. No, no, no. Come over here. This is where I want you. This is where I want you right now. Yeah, my my uh, my infantry are taking pretty big knocks right now, unfortunately. Yeah, the militia hoplites are definitely... I made them sound a little weak in the beginning, but they are definitely not fun to deal with. So, uh, um, you know what, guys? I want you guys to approach. I want you guys to get involved, hit them from the side. These guys in the front, just hold the line. These guys, I want you to hit these guys. And then my equites are... Ooh, look at all those dead bodies. Oh, very nice. And I need these guys to approach these guys. The equites can handle Peltas, I believe. I believe in you guys. I believe in you. And then my general... Where is he? Is he still over there? Get over here, dude. Get over here. Why are you waiting? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if personality traits get into play, but I'm starting to feel like maybe our general's not as brave as I was hoping he would be. But yes, so now the equites are chasing them down. Uh, we've lost 14% to their 27. Not great, considering we have a larger force than they do. But what we need to do is we need to get these equites to dive straight into these militia hoplites from the back. That will break up their main force, and then we'll be able to march our Hestadi directly in. So, um, uh, equites, I need you guys to get in. My general, now that you're here, I need you to get into the Peltasts. All right, Equites are making their way through. They don't handle direct approach, uh, direct battle very well. But look at here. There we are, guys. Now, are we going to break? They're shaking. They're winded. They're wavering. More sh <laughs> more horses are piling in. They're, oh, well, now they're, yeah, they're still, yeah, there is no way. They're broken. 
And there goes their captain. That is the beauty. You guys can come off the guard mode now. You guys can come off the guard mode now. You guys chase them down. Equidays chase them down. And actually, my general is still not doing anything. Guys, get in here. Come on. Let's get everybody in. Let's just come in and dominate. My Velites have no, uh, no ammunition anymore since that bar is no longer blue. So there's nothing I can do with that. So yeah, guys, um, all it took was the cavalry flank and we were able to break their front line and take them out. Now, there was a lot of green dead right there, and that's because we had to hold the line. The Hastati, um, they don't handle the uh, the phalanx very well. But, yes, our general is now in with the other um, the cavalry, and, of course, these Peltas, they're not going to like fighting cavalry. They really, they're really not uh, getting into the fray type of characters. So, it's very unfortunate the for them. enemies show their true virtue. They are not soldiers, only frightened rabbits running from our men. There we go. All right, so I could end the battle and officially win, but I like watching them all just kind of collapse. So everybody's approaching. They're now trying to run away. That makes them significantly easier to cut down. And yes, look at that. They just... <laughs> That was a frenzy, man. That was an absolute frenzy. So we lost 21% to their 99. I'm sure number 100 is about to go down. Such a victory. The day is ours. And there's the win for the House of the Brutii. Very nice. So with uh, 480 kills, somehow, look at that. They had 481 deployed, 480 kills, zero remaining. They must have attacked and accidentally killed one of their own guys. But, um, you know, on the other side, we actually lost 132. That was a lot more than I would have liked to have lost against a very, very basic rebe rebel army. But anytime you have hoplites, and that's what makes the Greeks so dang dangerous, is that if they approach you and they get their failure, phalanx in your face which is what happened here this is their army this is the line of dead from the phalanx you have to get around the back of them quickly or they're going to do a ton of damage like they did here so very nicely done to captain oedipus but unfortunately my friend um amulius brutus took the win all right so now we stake claim on apollonia now we have three options uh, this settlement has fallen to the mighty uh, to the might of your army, victory is yours, and the fate of the settlement lies in your hands. Very nice. So I can do one of three things. I can op occupy the settlement, which will give me 50 denarii, which is basically the money um, if I take it. If I, I could also enslave the population, and 450 of their people will be dispersed. And that, you know, depends on how much population. It's a certain percentage that's dispersed. I think it's 50%, actually. Denarii gained from looting is also 50. So, you know, the amount of money that we gain from occupying or enslaving is the same. But then I give a population boost to my main my main cities uh, if I am slave and then exterminate would be actually massacring the population so it would actually kill 500 of the population and then the denarii gain is actually 350 now one thing that's very important to do is to look okay this is before anything is done and they're happy you know, they're green, so there's really no point in this enslaving or exterminating. We have 9,200 denarii. We don't really need money right now, so there's no point in wiping out population with an extermination that could potentially be soldiers to fight for the Roman Empire. So I'm just going to hit Occupy, and it's going to be okay. Just Occupy that right there, and then that actually gave us a successful mission. Yeah, all right, so the Apollonia is now ours. You've been granted with the gift of 5,000 denarii, which is perfect so next step is since we've taken the city is we need to actually build some stuff and we're gonna go ahead and boost the taxes up uh can i go to very high 80 percent sweet okay and then we're gonna build the government house the only thing we can build so we might as well build it we also have a population of 900 here which is a pretty small town amulius brutus did a great job even though i was questioning your loyalty there for a second my friend as you weren't uh doing as i said during the battle but you know you got you got around to it you you made it you figured it out so next step is we're gonna send our spy down because there is actually a city here thermon okay so the spy will help us with our field of view our vision and in other words and he can see around well not like over mountains but like around mountains. so if we were to put him here then he could see this way and then obviously he could see this way but he can't see this way because he doesn't have a line of sight because of the mountain range so spies are super important we like spies blue in the face yes that's right and what does that say disillusioned yeah they're not really they're not too happy and the one more thing I want to do is I want to actually bring him out. Yes, they like him. They like Amelius Julius. He came, he brought them order, and now all they have to do is pay taxes. But when he's not there, they're not happy. Potential for riots under loyalty. But what I'm going to do is hit this button here, and I'm going to see, yes, 
Yes, I love the mercenary uh, hoplites. They're fantastic. And then the mercenary peril test. They're not great, but they're they're something. I, I like to kind of get as many uh, mercenaries in there as I can, so that will actually bolster our numbers a bit. And then I just love mercenary hoplites. They do fantastic work. So we've got that. And we've got buildings going in Apollonia. We've already got stuff set up in every other city. And I've actually got Aulus Brutus up here. Now, why would the game give me Aulus Brutus up here when uh, there's nowhere for him to go? I just don't understand. Possibly what I should do is just bring him into Tarentum for now. And then we can kind of dual govern because everyone knows the best cap best ships are led by two captains, right? And we'll, that's a joke. Uh, but we will um, we'll use them later on. We'll probably send Aulus Brutus north and take Shagestica or whatever this place is called. So I think that pretty much does it for our first turn. I do want to introduce one more thing, actually. If I hit the summary button, yes, there, a lot of that's actually covered up for you. But if we hit the factions rankings, this is a line chart. Once we have one turn, it'll start showing, you know, how good everybody's doing. And you can choose, like, your own faction. Or you can choose the factions that... Uh, all the factions are all the factions that aren't dead because yes factions can get wiped out top five or Neighboring factions which are all the ones that you have sharing a border with and that'll all show up there But right now there's no no information and then the family tree and this is actually very telling I like the family tree Tiberius Brutus and I like the Roman times because they actually had family names like in medieval sometimes they didn't have family names They just had one name. It's like well I don't know if you're not that it really matters in this game actually typically in Roman history the adopted Sons were better Caesars than the blood sons because the blood sons were born with a silver spoon in their mouth and never learned the Characteristics to be a good leader to begin with so but but I like to keep track of the family tree just for the fun of it Like for instance Tiberius our original leader actually has his firstborn son Aulus and Aulus is three three children one's a daughter two two of them are sons and um, the daughter Paulina is already 12 and it, interestingly enough and this is just reality this is just how it was back then in the Roman times 12 years old 13 years old was when girls were married off and so that's when she comes of age if you will next is Titus and Opius Brutus those are the two sons and they will remain in this kind of like um curly headed form until they hit 16 and that's whenever they can start leading armies which is scary as to me I would hate to have a 16 year old leading my armies but that is how it was done back then or at least that's how it's done in this game so I think that pretty much covers everything that's important aside from possibly the Senate uh, you can actually go in and see if you hit Senate floor you can see the current standings and see like okay the Senate feels the same but all three of these families the Senate or oh, the people actually likes the Julii better than us, uh, the Brutii, me, or the Scipii. And that's, you know, it doesn't really make, make a difference for a long time, but it will eventually. So, all that being said, I uh, think that'll do it for this first round. It is 270 BC in the summertime, as you can see from the sun. So, let's hit end turn and see what happens. And, ooh, this is all in fast forward motion. There might be a way to turn that off, but, all right, so... Paulina, remember, she was the 12-year-old. We just looked at her in the family tree. And Secundus Florianus, Florianus wants to marry her. And he has no traits. He's just a drill master. Which, this is a good example of morale. Okay, this man likes to drill his troops incessantly. This drive for efficiency is not entirely popular. And it gives a negative two penalty to morale for all troops on the battlefield. So any kind of morale penalty is bad. Yes, it does get 15 more movement points moving around the map. That's great. But if he is actually running one of the attacks or like leading one of the attacks or defenses, our troops would collapse easier. And that is not good. You guys saw during the rebel attack that morale and whenever people start routing and running, that's when the battle is lost. So we can't have this guy. Sorry, man. You cannot marry my daughter or granddaughter or whatever. So now, the the Senate, you, they didn't give me a break. Literally, from summer to winter, I took the, the place they wanted me to take, and that was Apollonia, and now they want me to take Thermon, which is actually here. Now, if we get that done in 10 turns, then we will be rewarded a unit of Terraria, which is a very good infantry unit. So the uh, Thermon is down here, and that's good. We're, we were actually sending our, our spy down to Thermon just to check it out. So let's go ahead and send him in there, and looks like... Um, Antigonus of Sparta is running the place and he is Ooh, we can see that awesome well we'll definitely make sure to look at this stuff with a, a second scroll so you guys can see it but Antigonus of Sparta age 33 he is a uh, lively nothing for morale there nothing for morale so he doesn't have anything bad or good for morale so that's good if we attack them it'll be pretty fair he does have hoplites militia hoplites again and peltas so basically the same army we just fought except for just a bit more difficult and 
although there is less as far as the Peltas, because there were two units of Peltas in Apollonia. Now, Antigonos is there, and he's got himself some heavy, uh, some, uh, heavy bodyguard, which is here. And 12 attack, 11 defense. The, the Greek, it's interesting, the Greek general's bodyguard has a lower defense than the, the Romans, which is kind of interesting, but I think their attack is better, so... Interesting to me. All right, so Thermon is our next target. Do I want to start a war with Greece? That's the big question. Do I want to go ahead and just jump straight into a war with Greece, or do I want to bide my time, maybe develop a little bit? Thermon's a great place. It's a great place to have. But if I start a war, I've got to be prepared to stay on the offensive, because if we start going on defensive, then it'll just be a big grind. So, um, okay. So, the... Uh, what was that called? The governor's house has been built, which gave us the ability to train peasants. Peasants are awful. We don't want peasants, but we need to continue building stuff. And since this is kind of like the front line and we don't expect to expand like northeast much, this will probably stay on the front line for a long time. So we need to go ahead and build a, a, a wall. That way people can't just walk right into our place. Very high tax right now at 135% public order. So people are happy to pay taxes as long as they're happy. You know, that's great. So we have that. To rent them, we've built the uh, Shrine to Mercury, so maybe we should build a practice range to get to Velitaste. So if we build a practice range, that will unlock Velitaste to be able to actually recruit. And then after that, we get archers, and archers are so powerful in this game. The indirect fire, the projectiles are just absolutely fantastic. So we definitely want to get those unlocked as soon as we can. But right now, I think the biggest thing is to continue building temples of uh, Mercury and things to continue to develop all, um, economically. And then here in Croton, we don't even have a port. Like, that that's huge. One trade available. And if you hit this show settlement details button, this actually shows the details of like, okay, why am I having 1.5% growth? Why am I having 90% public order? Turns out they're not happy there. They also don't like the taxes. And then the income, plus 232. And this, the, the plus 232, don't pay much attention to that. It's just, um... Mostly about seeing the potential growth of new buildings. So if I hit the port, then the trade would go from 92 to 224. That's a significant jump in trade. And then also admin goes up by two. Not sure why. But if we build the roads, the trade goes from 92 to 140. So the benefit of building the road is actually less. And then the mines, the mines is its own thing. It adds 200 to... Uh, to to uh, what is that called? Just simple income. And then again, admin goes up a little bit, which is odd. So we can use this information to make choices. You know what? If I want to build stuff that'll just make money, what will be a good thing to build? There's a trader that brings up from 92 to 100. That's not really all that great. So by far, the most beneficial thing to build is the port. And yes, it is easier to travel across the ocean. It's basically just a flat thing. Of course, there's waves and storms on occasion, but it's easier to travel on on the water than it is on land. So having a, a good, you know, Navy-based economic system is very important for not only in this game, but in real life. So, or at least back then before things, uh, the technology advanced. So Croton's gonna build a port, Tarantum's gonna build a Temple of Mercury, and Apollon is gonna build a wooden palisade. I also want to um, send my, this guy's here, and then I wanna send Aulus, and I wanna send a, no, let's send this Astadi. It's He's the one that's got the experience. And let's send a, a, a Velite over as well, just to reinforce, because it could very well happen that Captain Chabrius, I'm, I'm so bad with names, guys, if I mispronounce something, you know how to pronounce, just forgive me, but Captain Chabrius could very easily go on the um, the offensive, and we, we actually have a look at what he's got. He's got Cretan archers, which are amazing, by the way, we don't have the statistics, but they are long-range missile. That is difficult to find. So Cretan archers are fantastic troops, and then they have the Pelts house. So th this army actually has no real uh, front line. We could basically just hammer this with with cavalry and we destroy it. But you know, Thermon sitting right there. You just you, you want to handle these things with caution. So everything is built. We have a uh, uh, a diplomat here. We probably should send a diplomat over here so that maybe if we make enemies with Greece, we can make friends with Macedon and be okay there. And also there is another thing that we need to consider. And it's that the other Romans. So before we uh, before we move on to the next turn, we want to discuss the other Romans. So the game, basically, this game's called Rome Total War, right? And so it's all about the Romans. They're going to take over the world. We have the whole known world here, down here in this map, of Western, Central, and Eastern Europe. We got part of Asia, Middle East, and Northern Africa, and it's all about the Romans taking over. But it cheats. The game cheats a little bit. Like if the Romans were to attack a city. If you're not around to 
supervise a little bit, then they'll be given an unfair advantage. That's just the way the game is operated. But if you're there to supervise and watch, then if we actually watch those fights, you'll see that the computer will make lots of mistakes in taking the city, and then they won't take the city. And so it's actually a very easy way of hampering the advancement of the other the other families of of the Roman Empire, and that's a good thing. You want to hamper their their advancement, not because we're jealous or anything, but because eventually the Senate is going to say, "Hey, kill your leader, or we're going to start a civil war with you," because they're afraid because our popularity with the people are, is going to get too high, and we're going to be, you know, we we basically threaten their sovereignty. In other words, so what we need to make sure we do is we need to make sure we control the other families, so that when it comes down to it, the civil war is not a huge grinding fight this is just something that we can handle on our own and, and it's not cheating it's actually a good balancing way to do the game is by sending one unit of say cavalry just for the movement points and follow them around and, and keep track of what they're doing we want to watch the scipio and we want to watch the julii and check out their battles especially their city their city sieges because those are the ones that the game seems to cheat the most on so can i build equi i cannot train equites here but i can here excellent so we're going to actually need two units of equites here so that we can send one north North, one south and keep track of what the opposing armies are doing now let's check out the intern report here 5,000 no profits 4,500 very nice you can check that out in your own games if you'd like and then yes that gives us the breakdown of everything we built since the uh, the um empire is so small it's actually quite easy to keep track of and also one more thing i want to do let's see do we have Amul yes amulius and aulus amulius has a lot of movement points and aulus will take care of things when amulius is gone i'm going to go to the end of my uh into my land right here and i'm going to build a watchtower okay a watchtower so what that'll do is it'll expand my vision and now i can see oh that's salona so Gestica must be up here but oh, we're gonna build now we can see salona even if our troops move away these watchtowers are fantastic so i'll put a watchtower here i'll put a watchtower up here possibly i think the border is right here so maybe just put one in the middle just to keep track of our borders that's always an, a wise thing to do it's always good to be smart and keep an eye uh, keep an open mind on defense in case things go awry which they will especially in rome total war so i think that's everything we can do in um in uh, turn number two this is 270 bc in the winter now let's uh let's skip on over to 269 bc in the summer and it looks like oh awesome all right so macedon uh, this guy the guy's name is carpus of pilos macedon actually wants to open up trade and i'm i'm open to that if macedon wants to be friends and we could fight the greeks together I'm all for that. So yes, he accepts our gracious, wise, and rational offer, or, or we accepted their their offer. So, well, what about map information? You guys want to trade map information? Now, unfortunately, in Rome Total War, there's no indicator of how they're going to respond. Unfortunately, in, in Medieval 2, which is the next game, they actually like give you a yes, this is a good trade, or this is demanding, or whatever. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't happen in Rome, so we have to just kind of try it out and see how it goes. So let's see. After considering your proposal, we feel the following would be to our benefit. So they want us to give them money for their map information. Basically, what that would do is open up all the map information they have. And they actually have a lot of borders with Greece, or at least they're in the same battle for taking over the Aegean. So we should probably accept this trade. Not that I want to give them money, but it's, you know, it's not that much, so it's okay. And I think that'll do it. We can get out of here. Good stuff. All right. So uh, looks like yeah, the Greeks backed off. Awesome. All right. So let's get the let's get the broody. Uh, let's get our general and bring him around to here. And I I think that uh, I think this spot will work for a watchtower too. We just want to make sure that we're keeping our eye on our friends, the Macedonians, because as you can see now that we have map information, they own a lot. They really do. The Greeks, they're divided. They're separated like crazy. The Greeks are here. The Greeks are here. Well, they're here. And then the Greeks are also somewhere over here. So it's actually not that difficult to beat. Oh, and right here. That's Sparta. Be careful, Sparta. It's a dangerous place. So if you can manage to take out the Greeks early and stay friends with the Macedonians, this is not all that difficult. But between them both, yes, it's a difficult fight. So now let's hop into here and turn towards a little bit of Apollonia. Yes, so now, we, now we're not sitting ducks, that's good. So this is, like I said, gonna be kind of like the the fighting, the battle heartland. So maybe we ought to put in the shrine to Mars, okay? If the shrine to Mars is good because he's the god of war. This shrine, this shrine is dedicated to Mars, the god of war, and therefore a popular deity among the warlike Romans. Yes, yes, we are the warlike Romans, all about honor and stuff. 
we definitely want to make sure we keep the, the the god of war happy so we built the shrine to mars and what that'll do is as we advance as i've said already if we as we advance the shrine to mars then we will actually have better troops coming out of apollonia so that's uh that's probably good now a lot of you will probably think that instead of that one we should probably build the shrine to juno which is actually the god that will help us grow cities quicker quicker and since apollonia is a small town it'll grow faster that might be you know what that might actually be wise now that i think about it because once we take thermon thermon Thermon's a big city, and it could easily outpace Apollonia. So if uh, we were to put Juno, Apollonia would grow quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just talked myself out of my original plan. That'll work. Okay, so Apollonia is now going to get the shrine to Juno. Since it's a small town, it'll grow quicker now. And next step would be... Yes, I have... Yes, I have the Equites. All right, so let's take the Equites. And who, who is more of a threat? I believe the Scipio have a more difficult opponent than the Julii. I believe that the Scipio will probably falter on their own a bit easier than, say, the Julii. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this group of Equite just to kind of watch watch out for what they're doing. I'm going to send this group of Equite up to watch the Julii. And we'll just get them over here next to their capital, Veretium. And by the way, yes, sending armies to... Um, to other people's army or uh, sending armies to other people's lands that usually causes so, uh, strife but because we're allies we're all Romans here no there's no reason to distrust other Romans right now we actually have military access so if we start seeing like this blue guy coming over here that doesn't mean he's gonna attack us that just means he's probably making his way down here to help up Masana so this guy's gonna come here Captain Flavius good name good name that's actually the leader of the Julii family's leader right now so what we'll do is we'll put this equite here we'll follow them around and make sure that nobody cheats meanwhile I've got another equite down here and he will come this way we'll actually have to use our uh our fleet so let's get the fleet let's put him right here next to Tarentum right here and then once this guy is trained up next turn we'll hop him onto admiral marcus's boat send him over here to masana because this there's only they only have two so this is where all the fighting will take place here for a while here in sicily so that'll do it for that those two are building and easy turn no battles yet uh thermon did not train anybody they're not perceiving any threats yes the game the game's pretty easy pretty good at perceiving threats but this one has an extra pelt test unit oh maybe Maybe they moved one out and trained one at the same time. I don't know. Very interesting. All right. And I think this might be a pass as well. We might want to get Amulius and bring him over here and build. I don't know. We'll see. But he's out of movement points. And I don't want to move Aulus out because then Apollonia might decide to be upset with us. So what can we build here? Peasants. Now that's not good. Oh, and Tub Thumper. So uh, I know you can't see that, but Tub Thumper. Interesting. Many are roused to the action by his words, even if his speeches are coarse and unpolished to some ears. Aulus Brutus, the... I think the eldest son of our leader is actually a pretty decent dude, which is great. Plus two bonus to cash gain from looting. Ooh, quartermaster. We like quartermaster. All right. So I think that will um, that will do it. Yes, we get the equite. There we go. I like to clear these up. I'm a little low CD on that rain. So yeah, not bad. And well, I guess while we wait, is there no? There's no current mercenaries in Apollonia. So if you have your leader and you want more mercenaries, you have to go from one group or one area to the other. Even if you're in enemy territory, you could hire mercenaries out of their land. So for instance, there's one, two, three, four different regions that kind of intersect right here. So if you got a, uh, a leader, you could technically go to four different places and uh, hire four different groups of mercenaries in one turn if you really really wanted to but i'm trying to get him Julius home right now because if he's just him by himself he is pretty vulnerable so i think that'll do it for us let's get um let's get caius flaminius actually wait 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 press backspace i think no delete oh it's backspace okay so you get caius flaminius i actually want him to go on to the boat for uh for travel next turn so i think that'll do it for this turn okay yep all right moving on Looks like nothing of huge note. There is some movement there in Gaul, but no battles to be spoken of just yet. Uh, 1,280 profits. Very good. All, all three places, actually, their building's finished. That's great. And then we have another unit of equites that are done in Tarentum. So let's take care of that first. We're going to get the the boat, the horses. We're going to load them onto the boat. And we're going to take them down here to Masana. And then I will have them disembark the next turn. And then I've also got this diplomat here that we'll have to uh, take back over. I should have taken him to the across here first, but I didn't. So next step. Yes, yes. You need to get your booty up here as quickly as possible. And sorry, Marcus, I didn't mean to nudge you out of the way. So these guys will approach and enter Julii territory very, very soon. 
And now let's decide what we're going to build next. So Croton here, uh, we just finished building the port. That's huge. That's very good for our trade income. The next biggest boost to our trade income is actually the mines. The mines were plus 200. Now, I've got a port, so actually maybe the trader will be better. 277 to 300. Nope, the trader is terrible. So let's go ahead and build this mine. That'll help with our 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 uh, income is you know it's it's the truth for everything if you don't have money you're gonna have a struggle for like anything you do so that does that let's also communal farming does that add to income 662 736 that's decent average harvest i like how it tells you the, the the amount of harvest that you get here base farming for each region so each region actually has a base farming level and torrentum is 4.5 so that's pretty good but um communal farming will help with growth of the city and that's very very important for Tarentum. so i think Tarentum will have the communal farming and then lastly we have apollonia and apollonia really needs to be able to build some sort of troops or you know train some troops up but we also need roads for travel so i'm going to build roads first uh let's see land clearance roads isn't going to change anything for our trade just yet uh, good harvest actually yeah so apollonia has a better harvest than tarentum we're gonna build the roads first just for you know helping people get around and then um and then we'll uh we'll continue to build our farms and stuff i really 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 wish that the senate would not have told me to take thermon because i generally try to keep the senate happy i wish they wouldn't have tried to get us to take thermon next i wish they would have said salona because you can see it right there that's gold all right, Salona has gold, and the Dacians and the Thracians, they are interested in getting Salona. So I really, really wish that they had, uh, you know, allowed us the opportunity of grabbing Salona first, because it is a huge benefit to your to your land. Plus, it's just a very interesting land. It's very thin, and it has all of this here, all of the... Uh, the coastline here up to Patavium. And I'm still really hoping that Julia failed to take Patavium. That way I can take it for myself after I take Salona and then Segestica, which is up here, and then make my way to Patavium. But I uh, I don't think there's anything else we can do. I mean, yes, we have the troops to probably do a decent job of taking on Thurmon. We probably could take on Thurmon. But are we really ready for that? How many turns do I have left? If I hit the Senate button and hit Senate missions, I have eight turns to take Thurmon. So I could technically go up, take Salona first, and then make my way down to Thurmon. I could do that. That's a, that's a thought that I'm having. Let's send this group of Hastati over here. Unfortunately, we can't train Hastati yet, but as soon as we get the militia barracks, we'll be able to train Hastati, so that easily could be replaced. And we need to get these boats back. So let's just... Uh, yeah, let's remove these equite, make our way back up here, and start working toward getting Salona first, and then work our way down to Thermon. And honestly, if we miss the Senate mission, it's totally fine. It's not that big of a deal. So, let's end this turn, and it looks like a little movement here and there. Nothing too big. Salona, I guess they perceived what we're doing. They sent out a troop. But let's see, what's going on? Uh, we lost some money that time. Too much construction, that's fine. Cassius Brutus has come of age. Awesome. And uh, let's see, Gatebreaker. I know you guys can't see that. I'll read them for you. Gatebreaker, that's great. Heartless Ruler, that's actually good for his influence. Indifferent Builder, not a good builder. That's not good. Good Ambusher, Grower, good for farming output. Okay, he, he's decent. He, he'll be decent, but not great. Uh, but that really doesn't give us enough information to make any kind of judgments. So, Cassius, welcome to the family. All right, so Apollonia, we built the roads. Now let's build the land clearance. And let's also remove this uh, this Please army, ready. this troop of, no, not the diplomat. There we go, the equity. Yeah, yeah. So let's get this guy out here, and let's just keep an eye on what's going on here. Let's get Admiral, what is his name, Marcus? Admiral Marcus and bring him back up here. Next turn, we'll build to deploy the diplomat and also deploy the Stadi. So Lonus is sitting there, a, uh, a you know, just completely open to whatever we want. And honestly, Salona, if we can get it early, it could be one of our most valuable regions or cities that there is that'd be fantastic and oh hey look cassius actually spawned here i guess cassius is the son of either aulus or amulius they're both old enough actually i don't think uh amulius is old enough but i think this is aulus's son we could double check that just for the fun of it go to the family tree and oh no this is amulius wow 33 with a 16-year-old son. That's pretty young, Amulius. You and Lucilla got got busy quick, didn't you? So, um, and then he's got a, a brother. He's 16. He's got a younger brother that's 9, Cornelius. And unfortunately, Vivius, 
Oh, Vibius. He's a great guy. Vibius is fantastic, but he's not married yet, doesn't have any kids. But he's got the scrolls down there. You got six scrolls under his name. He's a fantastic manager. He probably spends way too much time in the office and not enough time finding a woman. So, all that being said, let's, uh, I guess we can, oh man, I really wish we were in a position to start training decent troops, but we're we're not quite there yet. We're laying down the foundation for a solid economic heartland. So what we'll do, I guess, is we're gonna send, let's see, do we want to send, uh, Amulius is by far the best, the best person for the job. Actually, no, 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 let's see, let's see. Uh, let's send, you know what, let's send Cassius. Cassius could use the, the, um, experience. So I'm gonna pull Cassius out of here, and then I'm also gonna send the, wait, wait, Cassius. Nope, there's no mercenaries yet. Ready? Let's send the Hoplites. Let's send um, the uh, the Peltasts. We also want the extra cavalry and an army of Astadi. And we're going to use them to go attack Salona. Now, unfortunately, we can't see anything from Salona, and I don't have a spy. I could technically get one. Could we, uh, could we train a spy? No. What about Tarentum? Oh, we can't do that in either one yet. Oh, that's a bummer. So this is our only spy, and he's hanging out in Thermon, which is good. I mean, Thermon has big gates and, and walls and stuff. Salona doesn't have anything. The spy actually has a chance of opening the gates, depending on how good of a spy they are. And he's a decent spy, I think. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Subterfuge of 4 out of 10. That's not terrible. He's 25. He's an expert spy. So he'll pre he'll probably be able to open the gates once we go offensively on Thermon. But right now, we need to take Thur uh, uh, Salona. So Admiral Marcus, he is the... He's the ferryman. He's going to take us across. So right now, we're just kind of waiting on him to arrive. So that's decent... Um, I do want to make sure I've got a decent amount of troops also in Apollonia in case the Greeks go on the offensive. So I think that'll do it. Everybody's kind of set and ready to go. So let's uh, skip on over to the next army. And there we go. We got some movement from the Gauls. And no offensive, no defensive. Oh, Navy of Rebels are attacking me. And that is not good. I don't know why this thing moves us around. But it looks like, yeah, yeah, the, the Rebels are here. The rebels are right underneath my face cam here. We have three soldiers and a diplomat. He won't be of any help in the battle versus Admiral As Asphalion. Interesting name. Uh, but, so, unfortunately for Navy battles, we can't run. All right, uh, but their boats are about as fast as our boats. We can't run away. We can't fight them on the battle map. We have to just auto resolve. So hopefully these rebels are biting off more than they can chew. The computer says that we're twice as strong as they are. Naval, Navy uh, strength ratio is two to one. Hopefully Admiral is just biting off more heat than he can chew. So let's auto resolve this and average victory. Yeah. All right. So we won that one. We lost a few, a few guys, but nothing terrible. And we actually sunk one of their ships, which is great. So they run off and everything's so fast right now. I need to make sure that's okay. But yeah, yeah, everything's good there. Awesome. So let's click up here, grab this army of Astadi, come over here, dump off the diplomat, go ahead and send him here. And actually, let's see, is this, yeah, this is the Greeks. Let's go have a chat with the Greeks. Okay, we're, we're too far away. We'll have a chat with the Greeks next turn. And uh, we're gonna send this army from with Cassius over here. And then we could actually get all the way to Salona which is just fantastic, but can we put it under? Yes, we can. We can actually put it under siege. We're gonna maintain the sieges for a moment so I can check out what's going on here. So in return, in turn report, that's pretty good. We build, oh, Croton, Croton. We need, what do we need here now? We probably should build the, ooh, we, have, we can actually improve our mines. 350, that's plus 150 per turn. That's not bad at all. What about the Temple Mercury? That actually will improve trade a bit, not terrible. We're not really, yeah, we're struggling with public order. We should probably go ahead and put in the Temple of Mercury that does add a building of entertainment or education or fun. Is that what that says? Entertainment, fun, culture, and maintenance. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and build the Temple of Mercury there. I think that's it as far as buildings that are done or cities that are done with their buildings. So that works out great. And then war has been declared between Carthage and Numidia. That is very interesting indeed because Carthage is down here. Ooh. Oh, we're not going to be able to get there in time, are we? That is a true bummer. That is far away. I don't have any boats. I, I really wish I could I could watch this because Carolus is a pretty decent place. Notice they've got the pottery. That's or wine. That's that's good trade income. I wish I can come here and watch Captain Decimus take Carolus. I doubt we'd get there in time though. I'm I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try. Where is yeah, Captain Quintus is here. I probably need to back off a little bit, just hang out and watch and see. Uh actually, wait, we need. Uh, we can't see Carthage. If if the Scipio put Carthage under siege, you won't be able to see that. But we can see this one, I guess. That's good enough. I just don't want to. I don't want to put Captain Quintus sitting 
uh, in Sicily just waiting in the middle of some foreign land getting wrecked by whoever comes across. So we'll just have to watch and wait for that one. Um, no offense on this side, but I do have these guys. I do have Captain Flavius that needs to come see this. So that means I need a boat. Is there any way that Captain Flavius could get a boat? Is there any way? No. Only family members can hire mercenaries. That's a bummer. So what we need is we need this boat. Yeah, there's no way. There is no way we're going to get there in time, guys. I'm going to try, though. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to pay attention to Carolus, and we're going to try to catch it. Right now, um, Ca uh, Cassius has been... He's been dropped off. He's now besieged Salona of the Illyrian rebels. Now Admiral Marcus can make his way back down. He's not carrying anybody of, of any importance, and he can make his way across there. So that is settled. That is settled. All of our cities are now building stuff. Very, very nice. And Cassius, the newcomer, he actually just came of age. He is 16, is going to besiege Solona. But that is going to have to do it for today, guys. I wanted to thank you all so much for enjoying this new series with us, the strategy series. It's going to be fun conquering the world. And yes, as you just kind of just look at it, guys, there's a lot of world out there. And we will one day, I guarantee you this, we will one day own the entire world and it will take some time it will take some strategy and it will be a challenge but that is what makes it worth it so guys that's gonna do it for me today thank you all so much for tuning in like this video if you did in fact like it hit that subscribe button also and join the class family if you haven't done so already for daily gaming videos and as always i love each and every one of you and i will see y'all again next time